Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. So, most of us have probably heard of the many worlds theory, right? The one first theorized by Hugh Everett in 1957 and popularized by Bryce Seligman DeWitt during the 60s? The one that postulates that every possible outcome of every quantum event creates an infinite number of parallel timelines? Show-offs. Anyway, yeah, that's the one. It's a little depressing, though, as it pretty much means that every decision we make is meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Infinity's a big number, too. I mean, what if we only had, like, a baker's dozen timelines to deal with? That would be more manageable. I know, right? And it might look a little bit like our topic this week. Nominated in 2013 for several any Awards, this is Broken Rooms by Grey Malkin Designs. The world of Broken Rooms was pretty much the mundane, common garden variety Earth we all know and tolerate until August 13th, 2002. That's when everything changed. The Divergence split the world's timeline into 13 different scenarios. Earth 1 kept on spinning just as we remember it, but Earth 2 through Earth 13 got progressively weirder and progressively more boned. From meteor strike to zombie plague, nuclear winter to impending supernova, all of the variations are in a bad, bad way. In fact, signs indicate that it's all scheduled to end on August 13th, 2015. Collectively, this small, and let's be honest, kind of depressing continuum is called the near side. On each Earth, a little over 1% of the population has a specific anomalous structure in their hindbrain. These nearsiders are able to travel from one variation to another through the eponymous broken rooms. Agents of an organization called the Regency Group, the players battle the ruthless secret society monarch while slowly unraveling the mysteries of the near side. And there are a boatload of mysteries in this game. Like, what exactly happened during the Divergence? What happens when each variation's inevitable doom runs its course? What's Monarch really up to? And just what is up with the number 13? Why does it keep cropping up all over the place? Welcome to the near side. Broken Rooms runs on the Momentum System, a streamlined engine that uses small pools of that red-headed stepchild of dice, the 12-sider. Dice pools are based on attributes, breaking down to the body-mind-soul trifecta with target numbers for successes based on how well-trained the character is in the applicable skill. When any two dice add up to 13, there's that number again, a point of momentum is generated. Momentum can be spent to manipulate rolls by adding dice or to activate strange powers called meridians. Each character develops meridians as they travel the near side and gain points in a fourth attribute called distance. Each of the 13 meridians is a broad power to edit a certain facet of reality. It's a system perfectly suited to the feel of the setting. After all, with 13 Earths on the line, you don't need the rules getting in your way. All right, are you guys ready to play some Broken Rooms? On this Earth, sure, but couldn't it be another Earth where we're playing something else? I guess, but... Yeah, or like one where we're all hyper-evolved telepathic dinosaurs. Or anthropomorphic squirrels! Can we focus? With I mean... fancy hats! Guys, what if our other selves aren't gamers at all? What if we're Hitler? Hitler? Like all of us at the same time? Sure. Whoa. Whoa. Or, and I'm just spitballing here, what if I were running a game right now, you know, instead of listening to your inane bull <laughs> When the gut-wrenching sensation of cycling fades away and you stop tasting the color green, you feel a draft of numbing cold. The side of the broken room that you came from was in good repair, but this one is falling apart. What a dump. This place sucks. Well, according to the dossier, this variation got hit by an asteroid. It's bound to be a little run down. Why would this monarch douchebag come here? Who cares? Let's just find the guy and get the hell out of here. The room cycles and you're able to get all your internal organs sorted out again. But the air is like a blast furnace and the sunlight streaming through the windows is searingly bright. According to the dossier, this one is called Hot House. The sun in this variation is about to- Oh, I got it. Super hot world. Sucks. So as you're busy revisiting your breakfast, you become aware of moaning and shambling footsteps outside and- Zombies? Really? The dossier says- God damn, dude. Is the dossier going to announce your engagement soon? World with zombies. Got it. It sucks. I mean, what's next? Armageddon by swine flu? A hyper-intelligent shade of chartreuse? A world entirely covered in bees? Mad bees? Can we go now? The dust, uh, I mean that uh, all the ordinary people disappeared in this variation. Well, it's better than zombies, I suppose. It kind of sucks, but I guess it's not that bad. I guess. Did I mention the massive swarm of killer bees about to descend on you? Uh, excuse me. 
bees? Mad bees. Called it. And your bee allergy is your one weakness. I'm pretty sure that everybody is allergic to a million bee stings. Yeah, yeah. Can we scream like babies and run for cover now? You know, if this game was written by Elliot, I guess the poem would end, This is the way the world ends. 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 <laughs> I thought that was Frost. No, that's not Frost. No, that's T.S. Eliot. Yes, um, yeah. That's for Broken Rooms. Uh, I'm actually a really big fan of this game. Um, I guess it probably is something that has cropped up in our reviews so far, but I'm a pretty big fan of eschatology. Like, you know, you see that with my life, love of Dystopia Rising, yeah, uh, Werewolf yeah. the Apocalypse, Broken Rooms now. Um, interestingly, the lead designer type of uh, Broken Rooms, guy named um, Stephen Aaron. He seems very friendly. I, I corresponded with him at one point. He seems very friendly. He does not seem like the guy that is obsessed with the end of the world. <laughs> as far as I know, he has uh, a couple of games to his credit. Both are about an apocalypse. <laughs> um, it's like he wrote Desolation. Desolation is oh, a fantasy game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's essentially a Tolkien-esque fantasy world that has been through an apocalyptic event that has cast civilization in ruins. And then he decided, you know what? I'm gonna do that, but 13 times <laughs> in one game. Try and stop me. He's, he's, Biggest uh, apocalypse is best apocalypse. <laughs> the, the game is actually really interesting. I mean, the, the concept of parallel timelines yeah. is really cool. I mean, it crops up in science fiction and stuff all the time. Yeah. But. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of Rick and Morty. I was actually really disappointed that um, I gather there are no real plans to expand upon it. Yeah. yeah which is a shame because they've got an imagination for this ending the world thing. So I would have loved to see a book full of alternate variations. We mentioned that, I think, I think this is mentioned in the actual review, but it uses that redheaded stepchild of dice, the 12 side. Right. Something I really, really like is that the meridians, the, uh, the powers that characters get, the reality editing sort of superpowers that people get, they are not lists of defined oh, yeah. mechanics. Yeah, that's right. They are more open-ended. They're more, uh, they are more like a stylized version of, say, Mage the Ascension yeah. Spheres. They say they're mage-esque. It's one of those things that requires GM adjudication. Yes. And they give you some guidelines and all that, and the system for that's en quite well enacting done. them is very simple, but it is... The number 13 keeps cropping up everywhere, and we mean everywhere, as in in the setting, as in also in the mechanics. It's a very stylized, very tightly integrated sort of uh, motif that runs through the engine and the setting. It's just really well done. I'm sad that we haven't seen more from this company. I, me too. I'd like to see, you know what, I'd honestly like to see a second follow-up book that takes place after the second, can, after the convergence, a uh, whole, you know, 12 new apocalypses. Apoc right. Apocalypses. Uh, ap Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Uh, something I also really like is the concept of the exiles. Of the exiles mm -hmm. who are survivors of the previous oh, generation. Oh yeah, yeah. People who were in the uh, who managed to get to Earth One before the previous convergence and were there when the second or when the most recent divergence happened. Right. Oh, that's something that's important. All the there. Are, there was a point where there was only one dimension, and then something called the divergence happened, and it separated dodecasided. Is that be it? Somewhere, someone on Earth was unsure. <laughs> oh, um, and this is something I will say I really like. Or tris triska dodecasected. You, you know, it made thirteen Irish. out of one. Something I, I really like about this book is if you look at it, it, it is very good about giving you all this information and this this eye for how life is on these worlds in, in their various stages of apocalyptic dissolution, from the one that was hit by an asteroid and humanity is all but destroyed, or the one in an ice age that's struggling to survive, to one of my favorites, which is the one that nothing has actually happened to it yet, but they've discovered that a rogue singularity is moving through the Milky, you know, the Milky Way galaxy and will pass through the solar system and destroy Earth. And it will inevitably happen, and there's nothing they can do about it. The view of Earth where everyone knows they're doomed and how they react to that. It does mean that you spend the, the price of that one book and you've and you got 13 universes to explore. That's true. So. It's, a, it's, it's a game, it is the most complete. What's the word I'm looking for? It is the most diverse niche game mm -hmm. that I've ever seen. So really, I, you know, honestly, again, I recommend having this in your collection because it's 
really yeah. cool book. It's good to read. If nothing else, it's great for ideas. <laughs> yeah. And if you like niche games, it's 13 niches for you to explore. Exactly. Um, I think it's atmospheric. Uh, it's really well done. It's got this nice element of sci-fi and horror, which are two oh, genres yeah. that I really, it's really true. love. And uh, I just, I really enjoy this game. Like the variation where the world is populated with monsters and only children can see them. Yeah. yeah. So children get converted into protective warriors. Like yeah. child soldiers. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, again, the one, there's a super, de again, they're all depressing, but there's a super depressing one where 99, 7% of humanity became uh, infertile. Yeah. So it's kind of like a children, children and men, men situation. Well, um, and it's it's got some fairly takes some fairly dark turns because that 1.3 percent not so great for them. Yeah, it's yeah. not a good so, not a good situation. But uh, but there's, I, we could we could sit here and like talk about how cool it would be to adventure in some of these in the various different variations but it's for bleak. way longer than What's you want to listen to. What's the name of that one? It. That one's called Stillborn. So yeah. I guess like infinite trigger warnings for Stillborn. Yeah. Because <laughs> that place kind is nasty. Of, yeah. That yeah. place is bad news. When when the rich when it becomes awesome for a rich guy to own one or more fertile women, yeah, yeah, not a great not a great scenario. When when they start erecting factories where uh, yeah. females are artificially inseminated and just literally turned into baby factories, turned into baby factories, not great. Not a, so, but you know, let's realistically exactly what would happen. Realistically, yes. Um, uh, the show is interesting because people miss the idea of having children or kind of have that have that lack. Oh, they have a television show. I remember that. where they, they watch just people rear, raise children. Yeah, they just oh, wow. rear babies. The few children that there are. Yeah. It's kind of like in Children of Men where they have the huge media blitz because the youngest person Broken in the world Broken. passed away. Yeah. But I guess what we can say is that we recommend Broken Rooms. We think it's really style, you know, really Absolutely. atmospheric, very interesting. But if you're, even if you're never going to run it, it's great to own a copy so you've got that all amazing source material yeah. that, that you can use in another game that you're running. Already. Be an absolutely amazing one-off too. Don't pick it up for light reading and don't get it when you're feeling down. Mm. Yeah. And when you are feeling down, Go ahead and hit subscribe on Seven Realms Productions for fun new comedy videos. Because we'll try to make you feel yeah, better. Yeah, we'll make we you will. feel better. We'll be there talking about stupid stuff like penises and role-playing games and movies. Amalgamations of buttholes. Yeah. Mostly penises. Mostly, Mostly penises. penises. Just saying. No, we're, no, we're doing it this time. We promise. Yeah. We're going to have a next one. Uh, okay. Have one next month. We'll see you next month.